definitely i i wish and hope there are more resources and support um uh, for caregivers um excuse me son can yeah. i just um, yeah Bob, what robin said yeah and also what you said about what could agencies do government yeah. agencies or insurance agencies right do you need metrics for advanced care planning completions Mm -hmm. Just like we have metrics for cholesterol, yeah. you know, and for our EKGs, and you know, other Blood pressure, and right, Pap smears, we've got it for everything, but we don't have anything for this. Yeah, and, you know, this is such a simple thing to do to mm -hmm. be able to have a metric determining. Okay, starting at the age of you know. 35, once a year when you have your physical, you're going to be asked these questions. Mm -hmm. That's it. And they document it, and if they don't do it, then they get dinged. I mean, we do it for everything else. Why right. can't we do it for advanced care plans? I don't understand. Yeah. That, that's the frustration. Mm -hmm. and it's only going to get worse because yeah. the baby boomers, I am part of the baby boomers, and, uh, and, you know, at some point, you know, as we get older, we develop chronic illnesses and, you know, you get to three or four chronic illnesses and you need someone to help you. Mm -hmm. And that can be so easily tracked when someone yep. has a predisposition, you know, three major <laughs> medical issues, they've had a hospitalization, they should have to have an advanced care planning conversation, even if it's a full code. Okay. But at least you had the conversation. Right. And I can't tell you how many times I've had patients who have gone to their house just in the last year who were discharged from a hospital that afternoon who never should have been discharged. And they're home and they can't deal with the symptoms that they were sent home on medicine for. Mm -hmm. And yet nobody's discussed goals of care with them. Mm -hmm. they're actively dying. There's no DNR discussion, but the medications were ordered and sent out with them. One was sent out actually on a morphine pump. Never had a goals of care discussion. No bracelets in sight. And you're like, how does that happen? You know? And so you say to yourself, and it's not just one health system, it's all the health systems, you know? It's, it's, it's the struggle without having mandates, without having metrics. People fall through the gaps. Mm -hmm. You know, it's due to initiatives that Robin and Joe and Steve and Betsy have done that have helped to plug those gaps, you know, for the last seven years, eight years. Right. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, there's such a huge need for education and resources. And, um, and as much as, you know, I think technology sometimes gets a bad rep, <laughs> and especially in healthcare, <laughs> because the only key technology that we have experienced has been EMRs, and the goal of EMR was different when it started, right? Um, but technology, where it is today, it can really help to bridge that gap if it is used correctly, because it could it could make it easier to educate about DNR. It could help with the easy checklist, you know, for, for DNR, it could help with video. It could help with making education related to palliative care, relating to a lot of these conversations available to staff, you know, on their phone, a click of a button. Um, it can make it available to patients and to families. Um, to know about this, um, to know about the resources, to know about education, to be able to connect with people who are trained, like palliative care trained experts, right? So I think um, there is a way, if we use technology the right way, it could humanize healthcare, like the way you were saying, Robin. You know, it could bring empathy into healthcare, it could bring connectivity into healthcare that can bridge the gap that's there today between what we, need and what we have um what do the you other thing see is that it, it's not one person to do the yeah. palliative care it's right. a whole team it's a whole team yeah so where do you see technology helping out to bridge these gaps and and addressing the the challenges that we see in palliative care today i think it's exactly what you pointed out that when they first introduced the MR, it had a completely different intention than what it is currently being used for, which we all know is billing and coding. Mm -hmm. you know? And the volume of information is so insurmountable 
that no one individual could possibly process all, all the different inputs that someone's chart has. And it's very overwhelming. 